Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to Akim out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, I want to encourage all Akim to go and watch this uh, movie if you haven't seen it um, called The Stand. All right. It's based on the Stephen Hill book. A Stephen King book, excuse me. And uh, it's a highly spiritual movie. Highly spiritual. Okay. And um, I believe this was a remake from the original in 1994 that I watched. And um, in, this, in this particular movie, you had, um, you, had, you had what was somewhat of prophets. Okay, you have prophets and um, you have people who the Heavenly Father, which who they depicted as the Heavenly Father, um, c communicating with, right? And uh, what, what happened in the movie is that, or not the movie, but the series, and this is going to be a spoiler alert, by the way. So if you didn't see it, you can go ahead and watch it before listening to this. Um, and... Um, uh, what had happened was there was a great uh, plague that that hit, and most of the people died off. And what well, and they, he was communicating to certain people in dreams to go to this particular area so that they can rebuild. All right. And what does the scripture speak about the heavenly Father speaking to man in a dream? Hold on, give me a second. fact let me do this let me get numbers the 12th chapter <clears throat> and This is uh, Numbers 12 and 6. It says, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. See, so the, the majority of the prophets, this is how the Lord communicated to them in, uh, in times past was through what? Through dreams and visions. Okay. And now you have a lot of brothers who get dreams and visions now. I myself have had, have had spiritual dreams and visions that came from Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai and were, and were messages. All right. Um, and in this, in this uh, particular movie or this particular series, that's how he communicated to the people he wanted to communicate to. Right. And, to, and he told them to go to a particular place. We can also get um, when deep sleep falleth upon men. Let me get that real quick. This is Job 33 and verse 15, and it reads, I'll start at 14. It says, For the Most High speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not in a dream, in a vision of the night. Right? So this is so we've just read before, this is how he communicated even with his prophets, right? Which are the top men on the planet Earth. He commun communicated to them in a dream or in a vision of the night. When deep sleep falleth upon man, Upon men, excuse me, in slumberings upon the bed. Then he openeth the ears of men, 
meaning what? The, the spiritual ears, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. So the ways of men is not in himself. The ways of men is in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. He controls everything. All right. And he communicates through certain people, you know, in, di in different ways, you know, mainly through what visions and dreams. Okay. Late, and, and also what? Through the Holy Spirit. Right. The scriptures speak about how the Holy Spirit will, you know, will guide us and, and how you would hear a word behind these saying, this is the way walk ye in it. So, um, so that, that. That was very spiritual within that in this particular show, right? And another thing that happened was that they they went to the place, and that place was you know they were living a simple life, compared to across town. There was um, another person, which he played the role pretty much of Satan, all right, because he would also come in their dreams and try to tempt them to go another way. And some of them fell for that. And what happened, they ended up, you know, trying to go and meet him where he was at and do his bidding, whatever he asked them to do, and then uh, meet him wherever he was at, which was a place they called New Vegas. Right? What do they call Las Vegas today? Right? They call it the city of sin. Right? It's all about pleasure and, and fornication and all these different things. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's a sinful place. So what happened was they went, um, those people went over there. And when you got to that place, it was all about um, fulfilling your lust. Okay? That's what it was all about. And that's what this world is all about. <clears throat> that's exactly what this world is all about. This is um, 1 John 2. In verse 15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Okay? And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the most high abideth forever. And that's the thing, right? You 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 live in sin for a time period, right? You get to live and you get to do all kind of whatever is appeasing to your flesh. But there's a time limit on that. The heavenly father is is um you know, has your judgment set out for you. So you think that you're going to be able to do this, you know, for however long and your time is is cut short. You know? And you don't really realize and understand what your judgment um, implies. I had this, this guy in the world tell me, nah, I, I know my fate. Because he always used to he hear me speaking about, you know, the truth. Okay. He's like, oh, nah, nah, I know my faith. I, I'm, 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 I'm um, comfortable with my faith. I, I accepted my faith. My fate, excuse me. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because when, when the Lord really gets done with this place and gets done with these people, man. This ain't going to be no, this is not a joke, man. He's known as Alashaja, demon-like power. All right? This is Hebrews 10 and verse 31. It says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of, of the living power and if you if you continue in wickedness and continue to in the lust of the flesh yeah it feels good for the time being but the end thereof is death you see the end thereof is death this is a uh, ecclesiastes 8 and 11 and it reads Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, because you're not judged right there on the spot, okay? Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And they were in that town, and they were living it up, just like just like Babylon, just like America, right? Just like um, Canada, just like 
uh, London and all these different places. They're all living it up. They're all about partying. Well, you can see the mirth is being killed in this place. And that's all prophecy. The Lord said that he was going to, um, you know, uh, uh, bring the daughters of low, you know, uh, bring the daughters of uh, the daughters of music shall be brought low. Right. They shall not drink uh, wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. This is all a sign of what the, the fun stopping fun world stopping. And now we're getting into the time of great judgment. But they don't see it. All right. He says, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear yet the most high, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall it pro neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Because he feareth not the most, uh, feareth not before the Most High. Well, they're gonna fear. Okay, they're gonna learn fear. The people of this earth is they. They are gonna learn fear. They are gonna learn uh, reverence and respect for Yahweh by Shimei when all when all is said and done. Okay, not gonna blame it on global warming and all these other buzzwords. It's gonna be clear that it's a higher power bringing forth this judgment. All right, and he's preparing judgment. Okay, he's preparing judgment, just like he prepared judgment for that place, because that whole time they were living, they were, you know, they were doing all that wickedness in that particular area. And um, at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father judged that place when you watch that, that series. He judged it, man. He, basically, they had something that was uh, <laughs> that represented the chariots that was that was uh, that was uh, destroying them sending out uh laser beams destroying them you see people's heads getting chopped off by the laser beam and listen man it was getting gruesome all right because all that fun and games man but then the judgment came and those people were in complete and utter fear you see but that all across uh, the um on the other side of town where these people who were called you know they were on that side right it wasn't fun like that you know it was more of a it was a very simple lifestyle and there was few people there compared to all the people that were in this uh place they called new vegas there was there was very few people in that that town that that is um likened unto what likened unto that small sanctuary that yahweh bashim Shai has um kept aside all right let me read this. This is Ezekiel 11 and 16. It says, Therefore saith, therefore say, thus saith the, the Lord, power, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall be uh shall come. Alright, he's a little sanctuary, meaning what? There's only few people that are gonna find this. That's what the scriptures say about what the 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 the, um, the straight gate. Few there be that go therein, right? Let's get that. This is Matthew seven. And verse thirteen, it says, "Enter ye in at the straight gate." For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's why the, that place, uh, New Vegas, it was fun. It was fun and games, and they were just having a good time. You know, all kind of fornication and freakism was going on there, right? And they didn't have a care in the world. They weren't thinking about the Heavenly Father. They, they, they hated the Heavenly Father, you see? And what I'm saying about New Vegas, I'm liking that onto this world, Okay? Especially America, but the, the whole world, not just America, the whole earth. All right. And, and and what were they doing? They were doing they were having fun. You see, they were in the broad way. Even people who are calling themselves Israelites. They don't fully come into this thing, because when you fully come into this thing. It, it's a very, very simple, boring. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um. How would you say this? 
lowly life. They don't want that. That's why they have all these these Patreons and and um, gimmicks and all these different things because they they have really they're they're in the world, but they have a, a Hebrew Israelite gimmick. Okay. And it says, "And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way." Which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Only a few is going to find this, man. That's why it says. Um, hold on. Let's get it. This is Romans 11 and 7. It says, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Okay? So it's a few, it's just a few people. It's not a, it's not a big, uh, a big congregation, so to speak. Matter of fact, let me start, let me, let me read that again, but let me start up. Let me start up, man. Let's go to um let's start up let's start Romans eleven and one. It says, I say then, hath the most high cast away his people, the most high forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. You see, so Paul was a Roman citizen, but he was a Benjamite, okay? An Israelite. The Most High hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture what the scripture saith of Elias? How he maketh intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the Most High? Uh, what saith the answer of the Most High unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So that Lord, the Heavenly Father, always has a reservation of men that he that he's dealing with. Okay, there's always been a reservation, even in the time of Noah. He flooded the earth, but he was dealing with Noah. Okay. And he was dealing with his sons because his sons made it as well, right? You see, so there's always a certain amount of men that the Lord has uh, that he'll that he that he'll deliver. Okay, and we're likened unto Noah. We're likened unto um, uh, Lot. You see, so on and so forth. Even Job as well. We're likened unto Job. It says, even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. You see, so we were elected, chosen, Lord willing, we be of that number. And it's not based upon our works, but it's all it's based upon grace and being covered by the blood of Yahweh Shai. But the elect would walk in a certain way. Okay. And one thing you notice about those people in that show is that the ones that were were right, so to speak, um, they resisted that that devil, man. They resisted Satan, and Satan was always trying to tempt them and trick them. But the ones that were that were right, they they resisted, okay. And 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 he, they were actually blessed. You see, they were blessed for their for their resistance against the devil, and that's what we're doing through the spirit and the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. We understand that there's no benefit to serving uh, the left hand. Okay, there's only there's only the, the true benefit, the real benefit comes from serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, through His Son, right? And if by grace, then it is no more of works. You see, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it uh, is it no more grace. Otherwise work. Is no more work, and one of the statements that they that the, the the guys made in there, well, pretty much all of them were asking, 
but some of those guys were coming from like some real low places, man. One of them was like a drug addict. The other person was a, you know, whatever the you know he was just like a country boy, and you know another, you know they were they were coming from real low. Uh, one was deaf, one was deaf, and then he was blind in one eye. <laughs> you right? And the reason he was blind in one eye because he resisted Satan, and Satan got mad, and, and whatever the case was. But then he was blessed to be uh, in a high position, so to speak. I'll say that, okay? Um, but you have to watch the show to see what I'm talking about, all right? But um, the whole the whole point is that um, is that they resi they resisted Satan. You see, they resisted, okay? And um, just like how a shy our Lord resisted. I'm looking for something here. Okay, this is Isaiah 1 in verse 9. It says, Except the Lord of hosts had left us unto us a, a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. You see, so the Lord always left that. That remnant is here. Okay, that remnant is here. That remnant will be um, taken into the kingdom. Okay? We just have to hold fast that which we had, man. Okay, that which we have until until death. All right, and there were certain of them that were martyrs in the city, you know. But guess what? The ones that are martyrs for Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, they're going to be extremely blessed in the kingdom. You see? Don't think that's just going to be light, bro. If your your name is in the books, man, don't think that's going to be light. Your name's gonna, your name is going to be in the books. What do you think those Ju those brothers and the mother and, and Judas um, the Judas Maccabees? What do you think? There, those those people are gonna be. They're gonna be blessed. That brother, those brothers and that sister, they're going to be blessed. They're not gonna be on just a regular low level. They've done something to prove themselves to Yahweh Hashem You know, showing their dedication. Yahweh Hashem is is very generous. All right. You see. This is Revelations two and nine. It says, "I know thy works, and tribulations and poverty." Uh, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And this is really speaking about Israelites. And we see a lot of these fake weirdo Israelites popping up, and they're not but the synagogue of Satan. And we tie this to the to the Amalekites because that's the ultimate synagogue of Satan. All right, those, those small hats. But this is really speaking about other Israelites, okay? Because they're wicked. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall, excuse me, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And that's what we're looking for—that crown of life. When Paul was um, getting ready to be put to death, he said, "What? I know that there's a crown that is laid up for me." You know, he wasn't worried about it. He was, you know, he was ready. Okay. And guess what? Paul is really already delivered. He's already delivered. Although, although he had to come back and, and, and prove himself to be of the elect again. Because we don't know what we did in the past life. But guess what? If we did the right thing in the past life until the end, well, we're already sealed. We're already, we already got a, a seat in the chariot. That's just the facts of the matter. Because... We already overcame, but we just don't remember that. So we have to keep, we have to play the game. All right? It says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death, which is that nuclear fire. And guess what? How was that place, that New Vegas place in this show, destroyed? By nuclear fire. That's it, man. Okay, that's all through the spirit, man. And so, like I said, that was a very, very highly spiritual show. Highly spiritual. And I, I suggest all brothers go ahead and watch that show. And I don't want to make this too long. I want to make it concise and sweet. So, you know, sometimes we speak too much and, you know, it loses that power. So, with that, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechak with Dash, double honors. To the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Salutations, much love to you, Aki, out there pushing this word out, truth and sincerity. Shalom.